it's Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop and we have a brand new pie ruler by Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet Designs. And if you're in our Sew Sampler subscription box, your July 2016 box included this ruler. So now I'm gonna give you a tutorial on how you use it. When you get your ruler, you're gonna to wanna to put fabric grips on the back. I've made sure to place mine where they do not overlap on the lines on the ruler. That's going to give you a really nice sturdy cut. Today we're going to be making the lemon pie table runner and I'm going to show you how you make one of the slices of the pie. From each of the circles you're going to use 16 slices of pie. So from a charm pack I'm just going to stack a couple on top and I'm going to line up the three inch line on the top and the bottom, I'm just gonna make sure that's lined up. I'm gonna cut. From each of your charm packs, you're gonna get two slices. You need 16 slices to make one pie if you want to make our entire table runner that includes five pies, you're going to use the entire Moda charm pack. Our first step is to arrange 16 slices into four quadrants to make your pie. I'm going to show you how to make your first quadrant. The first thing, put two pieces right sides together and I'm going to pin three times because all of this is on the bias and I'm sure all of you know how much I just love to pin. And when I sew at the sewing machine I'm going to go from the center to the outside since the center needs to be a perfect point and the outside is going to be um, sewn under later with interfacing. So let's go to the sewing machine and sew these two pieces together. Set our seams and we're going to press to one side, then we're going to press open. Usually just finger press and just let the iron go right over that seam. Since you're working on the bias, you don't want to move your iron a lot, you just want to press. Okay, so now we're gonna finish our quadrant and what we're going to do is put these together. Right sides together. Again, we're gonna start in the center and go to the outside. And here, you're just going to make sure your seams match. Now, if you're not going to put a button or a circle, you're gonna to wanna to make sure these seams match perfectly, but I added buttons and you could add a little circle to the center so it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. And again, three pins, and we're gonna sew from the outs from the inside to the outside. Our lemon pie block is starting to come together. We've pressed open our last unit, and you need four quadrants. So go ahead and sew those, and now we're gonna sew them together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pin and again, you can look to make sure that everything is aligning, or if you're gonna put a button on it, it doesn't really matter, but again, you're always gonna sew from the center to the outside. So I'm gonna pin both of the sets together, and then we're gonna sew these together and press open. Okay, so I've pressed and now we've got two halves and we're almost done. We're 
And if you look at the back, it's really nice and pressed open. And what you're gonna see here is it's creating a little circle. So when you sew on the quarter inch, you're barely going to catch it. So that is why you need to put something on top of it, like a button or a two inch circle. So what I'm going to do is just put them right sides together, pin at the ends, and then I'm just going to look and I'm just gonna like make sure they're lining up and I'm going to pin. Now after we have it all pinned, we're gonna just stitch across and we're gonna press open. So now we're gonna get ready to applique our lemon pie. We're going to be using Pellon Sew-In Interfacing Lightweight. You're gonna cut a square that's just slightly bigger than your circle. And you wanna make sure the Pellon is nice and flat and doesn't have any wrinkles, and you're just gonna set that on top. Then you're gonna take your circle ruler and line up the lines on Lori Holt's 10 inch circle ruler. And you can see it's nice and even and there's at least a quarter inch around. And we're just gonna use a friction pin to draw a circle. And the friction pin we're using so that the heat will disappear later. And now we're going to pin this in place. You wanna put enough pins to where the pellon doesn't move around too much because you really want the pellon and the fabric below it to be the same size. If the pellon becomes bigger, then when you applique it down, it's not gonna be as easy. And now we're ready to go to our sewing machine. You're gonna use an open toe foot and use the same stitch length that you normally use. And you're gonna stitch all the way around and you're going to continue past your original stitches a few stitches. Do not back stitch on this. It'll make your pellon pucker. So let's go sew. I've attached the bed to my Juki sewing machine so that I can sew with a circle. You're gonna see my hand move and this hand is going to just move in a circular motion and make this go around nice and easy. You're just gonna wanna go nice and slow. And again, we're just gonna stitch over our previously stitched stitch, a few stitches. Okay, now we're ready to finish prepping our applique. You're gonna remove your pins. And we're going to trim on the edge about a quarter inch. So you've got very little waist there. You're gonna pull this pill on and we're just gonna cut one direction and cut in the, another direction. You just want a small circle. You don't wanna to cut too much. If you cut too much, your circle's not gonna form. So you're just gonna gently pull the circle out. Use this clover point turner and just kind of gently poke this out. And right now I'm not doing it perfectly. I'm just kind of getting this out. Then what I like to do, take my iron and press from the center to the outside. And then I'll take the clover point turner again and do this a little bit more. And if you're hand appliquing, this doesn't have to be perfect because you can adjust as you sew, but if you're going to do machine applique, 
You want it to be done a little bit nicer. And you're gonna see that because you've sewn those stitches, it's really not much work. I'm just kind of pushing. You wanna make sure your pillon is not in the front, that your pillon is in the back so you don't see it. And it's really not too much work. And now my next step is to show you how to hand applique this down. So now we're gonna applique this down. We've cut a 14 and a half inch square. We always cut larger before you applique it down and then we're gonna trim it down later. That'll give you a perfect block. I'm using 9900 color 36. That's a nice yellow Bella solid. I'm gonna fold this twice and find my center. And I'm gonna finger press this Now I can find the center. I'm gonna place the center of this on there. I'm also going to line up, since this is a quadrant, I'm gonna line up these points. And then I'm gonna use clover applique pins to pin this down. These pins are awesome because they do not stick you when you're appliqueing. And they keep it in place really nice. So I'm gonna pin this down first. Okay, so now it's pinned. When I applique, I use Sue Daly Milner size 11. Some people like size 12, but I personally use size 11. And I'm using the brand new awesome Aurifil applique thread. It's size 80. And um, the color I'm using is 2105 and it is gonna blend perfectly. You should definitely try this applique thread if you haven't tried it yet because it's the best applique I've used in 20 years. So the first thing you're gonna do, thread your needle, knot it at the end, and come up in your pie. Do not come in through the back. You're just gonna come in right between the fabric and your pillon, and then we're going to just stitch all the way around and you're just gonna take really tiny stitches and this applique thread will not twist and it will not break. So I'm able with this thread to start with a longer length of thread than normal. You know, when you use silk, it um, sometimes ravels and sometimes twists. And since this doesn't do that, I'm able to use a longer stitch length or longer longer thread to start and so it's quicker. And I just go through nice really tiny bites, probably an eighth of an inch. And like I said, if you see Pellon coming to the front, you just take your needle and pull it to the back. Okay, now I'm ready to end my stitches. So I'm gonna go in make a stitch. I'm gonna go in and make a stitch in the same spot and I'm gonna go through my loop once. It's gonna tie it. Then I'm gonna go inside I'm gonna make a knot, I'm gonna make a stitch in the same spot where you can't see it and I'm gonna go through the circle twice. So I've done a quilter's knot twice, and I just do that so it'll stay in place and it's nice and secure. Okay, now you've got this all appliqued and we're gonna use a Creative Grids 12 and a half inch ruler to trim it down. And I'm just gonna line up the white lines on the ruler and trim. I always do my applique blocks bigger and trim down because then you get a perfect block. And then there is your lovely lemon pie block. So I'm gonna show you how hand applique versus machine applique looks with this wonderful new Aurifil thread. On this one, you cannot see any stitches at all, and this was hand appliqued, and you saw that I just did it really quick. It was not anything that I was trying to do perfect, and you cannot see any of the stitches. On this one, I did machine applique, and it looks just as beautiful. You can just barely see those stitches. 
And so in this quilt, I did three of the blocks hand applique and two of the blocks machine applique, and nobody that I work with could even tell the difference. So if you wanna go quicker, you can do machine applique. If you want it to be more of an heirloom, you can do hand applique or you can try both, but the RFL thread is gonna work perfectly on both. So a lot of you are gonna to wanna to take your charm pack and then turn this into a table runner. So for our table runner, we have five pie blocks, and then we've added six two inch by 12 and a half inch sashing. We've pressed that toward our sashing. We've cut four two inch by width of fabric strips and subcut them into two two inch by 69 and a half inch strips sewed those on and pressed. Then to the side, we've added two four and a half by 15 and a half inch rectangles. And to the top and the bottom, we've sewed five four and a half by width of fabric strips, sewed them end to end and subcut into two four and a half by 77 and a half inch strips. Your table runner is gonna finish 23 and a half by 77 and a half. And now I'm gonna show you how you can accent the centers. So for the center of our pie, you've got a very weak seam, so you've got to cover it up. So you can either applique a two and a half inch circle from Lori Holt, which is the same exact technique we just did. You can applique and put that down before it's quilted, or if you want to do something a lot easier, I have taken five of the largest buttons from our Yellow Button Lovers Club month. And I'm gonna take some RF Loss, color 1135, and I've taken two strands. I'm gonna put those together, and this will, the way you do this, if you put two together and you have a little loop, you're not going to have to create a knot. I'm using Primitive Gatherings number 22 chenille needles. And this is super easy. I'm just gonna take my button, go through it, and then on the back there's a loop and I'm just gonna loop it. So you've just saved time not having to put a knot down. Then I'm just going to go through the back. And you've got a lot of seams, so that's why we're using this really nice thick needle, and you're just going to you're just going to keep going through. I go through four times for each. And I think it looks really cute with different buttons, and you can use any color, but I think these buttons really add that touch of uniqueness to this project. So it's pretty bulky, but you can get it. So what I do when I'm done is I'm gonna go through twice, pull a loop, tie a knot, and then I'm gonna tie a couple more knots. And that's just gonna keep it in place really nice. And I know that that's pretty excessive, but I don't want this button to move. So you can see it's on there. It's not, it's not moving. And when we did this button, I did not go back to the back. That's the back. So it stays nice and pretty. And I always add my buttons after I've had it quilted. Um, but you know, if your quilter is going to do something custom, you might be able to add it before. It just really depends on your quilter's preference. I hope you love this lemon pie runner tutorial. It's very easy. It does look intricate. It looks hard. So this is a great gift because it looks like it took a lot of time and a lot of effort, but it really is a beginner project. Can't wait to see what you guys make. Hashtag lemon pie runner. And if you want to see more pie ruler videos, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.